everybody. Let me tell you, I travel all over the place doing these seminars, and when I'm in Boston in the Northeast, it feels like I'm coming home. So I appreciate you being out here. This is great. Big crowd. How many people like to fish? Raise their hand. <laughs> everybody. Wait, one guy there, he didn't raise his hand. You like camping? <laughs> you like making a stove, a camp stove? Yeah, he raises his hand. We're going to talk today about Finesse fishing, but before we do that, I want to just I want to wrap with you a little bit. I want to wrap with you. Anybody watched the show called City Limits over the last four years? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How many people like the show? Okay. I want to hear from you what your favorite episode was. Okay, we're starting this side. Anybody have a favorite episode? Go ahead. What was it? Detroit. Detroit. Okay, I remember Detroit. Detroit was uh, fishing the Detroit River for big smallmouth. I'm gonna tell you a funny story that happened with that. So. I got like this weird shoulder thing that happened. I never, you know, I thought I was a pretty healthy guy. I kept break dancing every two, three minutes to keep myself in shape. And I got to that one, and I'm telling you, I couldn't even hardly lift my rod up. But luckily, we're on this drop shot bite where you don't have to do much with a drop shot. You know, you kind of throw it out there and you look, let the bait work itself. And that's what we call the caught the fish on. But an interesting thing that happened in that one is I learned how subtle the places can be where these fish live, right? You know, fish live a lot of places, but if there's one thing I can generalize about where fish live, it's they live in areas of change, right? They live in areas of change. In that particular show, we had a big giant sandbar in front of an island. And there was one place on that sandbar that got dark. You could see it, the coloration was dark. And all it was was like a little tiny change in the depth, a little tiny difference in the, in the depth of the water. And all those big smallmouth were in that little spot. So, you know, what I got out of that one and what I've learned over the years is always look for change when you're fishing. Change is where fish live. What about another show? Anybody else? Yes, sir. Was it the one in Philadelphia where at the end of the show you wound up showing the kid how to fish? Oh, it was awesome, wasn't it? Yes. That's Good show. Favorite. Interesting story about that. Our first show we ever shot was in Philadelphia. We came up with this concept, me and another guy, and we thought it would be cool to shoot, shoot a fishing show in the city. At that point, we had no idea what we were doing. They came to Philly because it was my hometown. That was the only episode in four years that I ever fished by myself. That first one, we weren't even going to use a guest. We didn't know what we were doing. And so we, we fished, and then at the end of the day, we drove around, and I said, I'll go up, go up to Fairmont Park. Let's go up to the waterworks. You know, it's a really cool area where people hang out and fish, and maybe we could talk to some people about fishing. And we get up there, and we see this kid about your age, about nine, and he's fishing right off of the off of the breakwater there, above the falls at the art museum. And man, we were talking to him like, "This is this is me. This kid's me when I was that age. You know, you could see it in his eye." He was teaching you. He was, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> he didn't know me from Adam. You know what I mean? I, I could, you know, if I told him my name was Babe Winkleman, he would have been like, "Hey, Babe." <laughs> I'd have been like, it's critical that you use a leech. Uh, <laughs> uh, this kid didn't know who I was. But we started talking about fishing. He instantly knew that I wanted to fish and that I liked to fish. And he's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm going to run home and grab, grab another rod so you can fish with me. Take my rod and fish while I go get you another rod. I looked at him like, oh my god. And this kid's from Philly. Unbelievable. <laughs> but it happened. It was real. You know, and, and it's, that's the passion of fishing. You know, what happened there was amazing because you saw, you know, a kid that's nine years old, what fishing can do. You know, and that's why every, every one of these seminars I preach to people, get kids involved in the sport. It's the only way we're going to grow. Awesome, cool show. A couple more. Anybody? Yes, sir. Uh, Potomac fishing that runoff. Potomac. Uh, who remembers Potomac River one? That was awesome, wasn't it? Yeah, Potomac River is known for these lush grass beds and big, large mouth. And here we get up there, we fish kind of these normal holes, we work it a bit, we were frustrated, we were mad, the tide was wrong. And we're running up to Washington, D.C., and we see this pipe. 
shooting st stuff out into the river. <laughs> and, I go, oh. and as we got closer to it, I inhaled this beautiful scent. <laughs> and lo and behold, it was a poop pipe. <laughs> That's right, poop pipe. That's what it was. And they loved that poop, them smallmouth man, I'll tell you. No, but it, it, it tells you something about current and about food, right? The smallmouth that year were, were down where they normally are. We had a year where the salt didn't go all the way up, so they kind of came down the river to where they normally live in the upper Potomac, and they went to this area of current to feed, right? The feeding station, you know? It's something you always look for any time of the year, especially in the summer and fall, which is when we shot that show. If you could find areas of current, it's key, especially in the summer. How many people fish in the heat of the summer, in the very hottest parts of the world? Everybody. Okay. You too, young lady. There's three things that I want you to remember when you're fishing in the summertime. Okay? Three things. You ready? Deeper, thicker, current. Deeper, thicker, <laughs> current. Repeat it. Deeper. Yeah, buddy. Yes, deeper. Thicker. One more. Current. <laughs> <laughs> about the current, but it's true, right? The summertime <coughs> is the hottest time of the year. The fish metabolism is wired up. The water temperature is the hottest of the year, and the fish are going to be three places in the summertime, in the heat of the summer. They're going to be in deep water, right? Why are they going to be in deep water? Cooler water, right? Cooler, more oxygenated water, and they're going to be deeper because what's, what, what else is in deep water in the summer? Big fish. Big fish. The food Big source, right? They're going to follow their food source. So in the summer, they're going to go deeper. They're going to be in that deeper water, in that whatever, whatever body of water you fish. They're going to be thicker. And by thicker, we mean shallow, thick cover, right? And let's, let's delineate it right now. Structure is the bottom contour of the lake, is the physical contour. And then cover is an object on that contour, that bottom, right? So what, what could cover be? Give me one. What's cover? What's a form of cover? Come on. Your skateboard. That's a good one. <laughs> Logs. Logs. What else? Weeds. Weeds. Rocks. 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 Docks. Shopping. Trees. Vegetation. If you're from yeah, New Jersey you like me. Shopping carts. Shopping yeah. carts. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy Hoffa. Uh, juice jugs. <laughs> but the fish, even in the heat of the summer, are going to remain shallow if there's thick cover, right? How many people remember the Bassmaster Classic when it was held in the summer? Used to be held in the summer all the time, right? How many of those summertime tournaments were one shell? How many of them? Most of them, right? The tournament I won, I won in 2003 in the Louisiana Delta at the end of July. The air temperature was 110. The water temperature was in the 90s. You know how deep the fish were? They were that deep. Because there was thick cover. How about a year later with Takahiro won on Lake Wiley? What was Takahiro doing? Cranking shallow wood, right? Thick, shallow wood coat. So the second pattern in the summer is thick. Find the thickest matted cover you can find. And then the last one, which I know you like, that, is current, right? Just like we said with the Potomac example. In the summertime, if you can find current, you're going to find bass for the same reasons they were in deep water, right? Cooler. Oxygen, bait, and there's current in every body of water we fish, right? Isn't there? Obviously, there's current in rivers and creeks and streams, right? Is there a current in a little tiny five-acre farm pond? No, yes there is. Is there current in a little five-acre farm pond? How is there current? Wind. Wind, wind, right? Yeah. Wind's blowing. <laughs> little piece of pond, you see it blowing across. There's a point, there's an island, it blows through that funnel, the bass stack up on the other end. You throw your bait out there and you go, whack! You catch it. <laughs> there's current on our favorite lake, right? We launch the boat, it's quiet. There's nobody out there, it's still, it's peaceful. There's a little mist coming up from the water. We make our first cast, everything's so quiet, we're happy. And all of a sudden, the jet skier comes by. <laughs> 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 what just happened? 
great current, right? So summertime, like the Potomac, deeper, thicker current. Deeper, thicker current. Should we let your system try? Deeper, thicker, current. <laughs> Y'all don't like current. <laughs> What's some more? Give me some more. Okay, hold on. Yes, sir. Cleveland. What do we think? Oh, yeah, Cleveland, Ohio. Anybody remember Cleveland? Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Frank Scalish. Oh, I do. I had my disco pants on in that one. <laughs> Anybody wear disco pants? Come on, let's be honest. I do, I still have them. <laughs> let's be honest. I want everybody, let, we're all friends, let's be honest with each other. How many people used to wear bell bottom jeans back in the day? Come on, be honest. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. A little bit, a little bit later in time. Coming how many back. people back in the day wore them? Coming back. Wore Parachute pants. <laughs> <laughs> Scary, dude. I know. I did too. And I wore disco pants in the Cleveland show. And it was awesome because, you know, here we are in downtown Cleveland fishing right on the, right on the lake, right on the lakefront, catching all these big bass. And, and one key thing that I figured out there on that show was how important it is to mimic forage, right? Mimic forage. It's a big theory for me in fishing. How many people trout fish? Raise their hand. What's the golden rule of trout fishing? You know, it. picking your fly. Catch them. Match, Match the hatch. hatch. Match the hatch. Don't put you up there. Who said that? Match the hatch. Match the hatch, right, is the golden rule of fly fishing. But it should be the golden rule of fishing, right? Should be. And in that show, Frank Scalish caught the first fish. They didn't show this on film. He caught the first fish. He swung it over. It was a keeper. When he swung that fish over, Guess what came out of his mouth? I'll give you a hint. It was about that big, it was brown and orange, and it was crunchy. What? Red lobster? What? It was a crawfish. He swung that fish over. I looked on the bottom of the floor. I go, what the heck? 